Hi, my name's Benji, and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today we bring you an episode of the Versus Chronicles, where we pit two games against each other that have a sometimes obvious, sometimes completely made up connection between them, giving you a whistle-stop tour and only mostly serious overview of both games. These videos will act as a record, if you like, of what I've been playing recently. And so ladies and gentlemen, it's fight time with Dice and Cards. And so introducing to you first, in the blue corner, the firstborn child of game right and Japanese food, a game so edgy that it brings with it one full exclamation mark, Sushi Go! And now introducing to you, in the red corner, the second born runt of the litter, that's sure to inherit absolutely nothing worthwhile from mummy and daddy, except their vintage dice collection, Sushi Roll. <coughs> and so we start with Sushi Go, a pure card drafting game that sees you sitting at a table ordering, you bloody guessed it, Sushi. So you have a hand of cards, and this is where the set collection element of the game comes in, because you need to pick one of those cards and pass the remaining to the player to your left. You might decide you want to stuff your face with dumplings, because for some unknown reason you get exponential benefits for doing so. Or, let's say you're more of a sushi connoisseur, and you know that wasabi automatically improves the taste of the nigiri by multiples of two. Either way you've got choices to make, because the cards you get to choose from each time will slowly dwindle until you're left with one card that absolutely, positively was useless to everyone else. So you better hope by that point you've got enough of the cards you needed to gain you the most points. But wait, that set of cards is only the first course? Yep, there are three more courses or rounds to get through, so there's no room here for those your eyes are bigger than your bellies types because you're getting your money's worth of grub playing this, whether you like it or not. Furthermore, just when you think you can't cram in one more bite, you're respectfully obliged to scoff down that pudding you've been slowly accruing throughout the game. Don't ask why you're holding pudding throughout the meal. Perhaps you're worried someone might eat it and you won't be able to indulge your sweet tooth before lapsing into a food coma. This really is a great all-round package that is well suited for parties and family gatherings. The base Sushi Go comes in a tidy little package that makes an excellent travel game, but only accommodates two to five players. However, Sushi Go Party is a bigger box version of the game that for me is a must if you're not fussed about travelling with it because it offers more variety, more replayability and accommodates up to eight players. And it even throws in a board for you to keep tabs on what's on the menu and a means within which to show each player's score. I have both versions of this game and I'm pleased to say this is an absolute staple in our household as it's got a great flow to it, it's easy to teach and it has a welcoming theme. So I say cardboard sushi for the win. Then of course along came the dice rolling craze which Sushi Roll rides in on horseback on. And we had to have some of those apples didn't we game right? Yes. Part of me felt like just copy and pasting the overview of Sushi Go in here, replacing all mentions of cards with dice, but that just wouldn't be cricket, would it? But in all honesty, it really isn't that far from the truth. All of the types of sushi, appetizers and sides are all ported from the base game of Sushi Go. Yet this time they can be found on the faces of pretty little dice. So this is undoubtedly an attractive looking game. I was more than happy to admit to myself that I like rolling dice and I like Sushi Go. I also know that the good lady liked those things too, and that I liked buying her games as presents. And so with Christmas looming, I took the plunge. So it's now after Christmas day when this first gets to the table, the cellophane comes off, the relatively easy rules are read and conveyed to an eager playgroup, and it's more or less as we expected, sushi go with dice. Whereas this time you're drafting dice instead of cards, and each time the remaining dice are passed round, they're re-rolled, so you're only armed with some public information denoting what type of dice are coming your way. But of course you're not guaranteed the facing on the dice that you want, since at this point on paper there are enough subtle differences to make this an acceptably different game. The problem is that each and every way you look at it, the game is lesser than the sum of its older siblings' parts. It didn't flow as well, the re-rolling of the dice was necessary to keep some suspense and hidden information in the drafting process, but it just wasn't that fun rolling the dice. And this was going to be the one point that made or break this title for me, and sadly it just doesn't do enough to warrant having both of these games in my collection. 
That's not to say that this is a bad game. It still has the fundamentals in there of a decent game. It's just that you can't unknow that Sushi Go is a great, great alternative. And so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This probably has a place in the market and if you stumble on this first before Sushi Go or you have a random aversion to card games then you know what, give this a go. But for me there is very little here that inspires me about rolling Sushi Dice. So there's absolutely no surprise who the winner here is on this day and at this time. The reigning and now undefeated Sushi Go. I can certainly understand the business logic of designing and releasing Sushi Roll, but from a consumer perspective there's a clear home for the fundamental mechanics these games share, and that home is card drafting. We do hope that you've been raucously entertained and highly educated by this video, and so if you have please do give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with what we do.